How's it going, Makis? I'm back with a brand new video. Today I'm going to be covering player owned farms. Let's get into it. Welcome back. If you're new here, you can find timestamps for everything that I will talk about in the description box below. On screen, you can find an overview of this guide. Feel free to skip around to the sections that interest you. First, let's talk about some of the things that Player Owned Farms has to offer. Player Owned Farms is a slightly passive extension to the farming skill. It provides some PVM and skilling perks, and if done correctly, it can generate a sizable profit. The XP that you get from managing the farm is also top tier if you're interested in farming experience. Speaking of profit, when your farm is fully operational, it will be really easy for you to start pulling in 8 to 15 mil per day. Now let's go over some of the basics. Player owned farms will grow as you gather enough bean currency to purchase pen deeds for your open slots on your farm. Each pen can hold a different set of animals and requires a different construction level to build and farming level to purchase. The farmer's market is broken up into three different tabs, and it is here where you'll be able to purchase upgrades for your farm and a slew of pets and miscellaneous upgrades. The pets that are available to you can be obtained through combat, skilling, or purchasing from other players. More on that later. Each pet has a series of growth stages that it will go through, and the time that is required to advance these stages is influenced by a variety of things, but generally you're going to be looking at the times that you can see on screen now. When deciding what pets you want on your farm, you'll have to consider the cost to obtain, any benefits they offer, the skill level required, and the sale prices if you are interested in advancing your farm. I'm gonna be covering this in the last section of the guide, but it's generally beneficial to pull your pets out of their pens when they reach the adolescent stage if you wanna maximize your bean profit. Each pet requires a specific set of food. On screen, you can see a chart of what each pet can eat. Generally, you'll want to use food that's the easiest to obtain or the food that's the cheapest if money is a limiting factor for you. For pets that eat seeds, you can obtain sunchoke and flytrap seeds from the GE in massive quantities or you can pickpocket a master farmer. For fruits, you can obtain 40 pineapples and cooking apples for having the Karamja achievement sets done by talking to Del Monte or you can buy pineapples and catherby for very cheap. But this will not give you enough food for your pets, so I suggest buying watermelons or any other fruit that's cheap and using those. Mushrooms are going to be fairly expensive if you go with more cello mushrooms. I highly suggest that you farm these yourself as you'll make a considerable amount of money from gloom shrooms. Or you can spend some time in AFK in the Ark and use Ark mushrooms for your zygomites. For fish you can use tuna or trout or any other fish that you have that's cheap, such as the fish that you get from your kingdom. Depending on traits and a variety of factors, your pets can get diseased from time to time. On screen you'll find a collection of symptoms for each illness. If you incorrectly diagnose an illness, your pet stats will go down, so make sure that you have this list handy until you memorize the symptoms. Speaking of stats, you can buy or create your own honeycomb using the beehives near your farm. These will generate one honeycomb each per hour. It's only necessary to have around 30 of these to get started, but you should start making honey as soon as possible. You can buy woad leaves from the gardener in Falador Park. If you offer him 20 coins, he will give you two woad leaves. And you can farm marigolds, but you will only be able to get one per patch. You can also buy these from the GE. Before you can collect the honeycomb, you'll need insect repellent, and you can get this east of the Catherby lodestone on a table inside a house. Then, stocking your beehives is as easy as clicking on the beehive and then putting your leaves or marigolds inside them. When you have your honeycomb, you can hop inside one of your pens, check your health and happiness of your pets, and then use the corresponding honeycomb on the pet to boost it by 10%. Player-owned farms will also give you access to the Master Farmer outfit for 1,000 beans, assuming that you have 80 farming and 20 invention. This will give you 7% faster aging when you're at the farm. It'll give you a better chance for positive traits from checking and breeding pets, and it'll give you 10% more beans from sales. With the basics out of the way, let's talk about breeding. Breeding time and success is influenced by a variety of things, including traits and perks, but there is an average time that it will take to have two animals breed. On screen you can find the average time that it will take to breed two pets inside a pen. There are a lot of traits that can positively influence our chances of breeding. The first thing that we want to go for is the Like Rabbits Tier 2 perk, which will increase your chances of breeding by 10%. I'll cover how to get that in the last part of this guide. 
the fortunate, unlucky for some, and lucky perks will boost your bean sales. Genetic mutation and instability will boost your chances of getting multiple traits on an offspring. Good breeding will give you a chance of getting a different breed from your parent. Studly and virile will increase your breeding chances. And radiant, glistening, and sparkling will increase your chances of getting a shiny pet. Taking all of these traits into account, you should periodically cycle out your breeding pairs to maximize whatever it is you're going for, whether that be increased beans or a chance at a shiny offspring. Speaking of shiny offspring, if you're into collections, you can find a lot of enjoyment trying to obtain all of the various combinations of pets that are available through breeding. Each individual pet has a shiny version that can only be obtained through luck from breeding. Now that we've covered the basics, let's finally talk about how to maximize the farm and set it up for some big gains. Step one, complete the tutorial and claim your extra beans. Buy 12 bunnies on World 2 and sell them to MyFi for 170 beans. Do this daily when you're just starting out. Place two bunnies in a small pen and start making happiness and health honey. If your farming level is less than 81, buy spiders from the GE or World 2 for about 1 mil each and put a male and a female inside a breeding pen. If your farming level is at least 81, buy zygomites, around 6 of them, from GE or World 2 for around 1.5 mil each and try to have a male and a female inside the breeding pen. An alternative method would be to camp arc mushrooms or morcella mushroom farming, but I don't recommend this unless money is a limiting factor. When your zygomites or spiders reach adolescent age, bank all of them except for one male and one female for the breeding pen with good traits. Max your happiness and health on all breeding animals with delicious and medicinal honeycomb. After this, restock all of your pens with more spider eggs or zygomites from the GE or World 2. Then buy a farming totem and place it on the small pen with your bunnies for a boost to your breeding success. After that, you're going to sell off all of the adolescents that you've had in your bank for around 6,800 beans if you went with zygos or 2,000 if you had spiders. And then you're going to buy the medium pen D2 for 500 beads and fill it with more pets. After this, you're going to buy breeding and medium pens for 3k beans, and you're going to make sure from this point on to always have a breeding pair in all of the pens that you have pets. You should periodically rotate out your breeding pairs if you get children with better stats and sell off the elders or adults on World 2 or to the NPC, but that's not recommended. From here, you're going to buy the second small pen and fill it with bunnies and place down another farming totem. You can go ahead and buy both of the large deeds, and then you can fill those with yaks or cows if you're low on money. After this, you should buy the master farming outfit if you have enough points and you have the invention level required. And from this point on, it's pretty much just rinse and repeat. Continue rotating out your zygos and spiders into your bank before they become adults and sell them when the NPC visits the farm. You could also at this point just decide to sell your excess stock on World 2 for some profit. You can further increase your profit by buying animals breed in large pens and you want to keep a maximum of two yaks in each pen so that way each can get an offspring. Yaks can be upgraded to dragons if money isn't an issue. You should repeat the process of cycling out the animals into your bank until the seller shows up and unlock the rest of the farm in this order. Bank chest, multiple trait boost medium, multiple trait boost large, animals can now breed in small pens, multiple trait boost small, noted producer, the seasonalizer, Trevor the Magical Zygomite, Herb Hoarder, and finally, Farm Deeds. Once your farm is set up, which should take around four to six days, you'll get to the point where you can start turning out massive AFK profit from your farm. Inside your small pen, you will have two rabbits and the totems for the increased breeding success chance. You could alternatively have chinchampas in these, but I don't recommend that as you'll be sacrificing 10% breeding success which is definitely needed on some of these pens. Both of your medium pens will have three to four zygomites, depending on how you are going about turning your profit. If you're going for profit from breeding, you should have no more than three zygomites inside your pens at any time. That way you have an empty slot for a child to be born. If you're going for profit through child rearing, you should have four zygomites in each pen and sell those on World 2 when they reach adolescent age. Your large pens are pretty straightforward. You're gonna have two yaks or dragons in each of the large pens, and you're gonna sell the children on World 2 for profit. There's plenty of ways to go about this, but this is definitely one way that you can get some nice passive income. I hope you guys are really enjoying Play Your Own Farms. I'm personally using this to help get 99 farming on my ult, along with covering bonds on both my characters. I plan on going for the Farming Deeds title on my main and treating it as a long-term goal, like the Portmaster title. Let me know how much progress you've made in the comments below. Until next time, Taki out.